Okay, so today we are going to learn how to make our first part in Fusion 360. First things first, let's go to the top of our window in Fusion 360 to our, do you remember this section, what it's called? The application bar. And we're going to click on our save button and call our part, first part, dash one, two, three block. There we go. We can change the location to save it, but let's just keep it at admin project and save. So the first thing we always do, and I repeat always, always, always do, is we're going to uh, right click on our primary assembly. So that is right here. If we look at our browser, the very first item, which is also the name of our file and click on our right click new components there are tons of of ways of doing the exact same thing in fusion 360 which as you develop your skills you will be appreciative of having options for doing things so another way of creating a new component is found right here we click on our create tab in our toolbar and the first thing that shows up there is new component so we are not going to explain all the reasons why we need to create a component right from the start, but we simply need to get into the habit of creating one. Now, simply put, creating components will help us in the future when we create animations, drawings, motion studies, etc. So regardless, let's create a new component. I'm going to right click new component. And up comes our dialogue window on the right side. So let's call this one, two, three block. Now you might be asking yourself, what is a one, two, three block? Well, that's a great question. It's actually something that's used often in manufacturing for setups, for uh, measuring all sorts of different things. But for the sake of this lesson, let's just picture one, two, three block being something like uh, a mint container. That's one inch tall by two inches wide by three inches deep. So let's make it already. Now remember, Fusion 360 is designed with the user in mind and Autodesk and its awesome team have made it easy for us to design things. We always work like we are reading English, top to bottom, left to right. So as we look at our toolbar, we can see that under our create menu are a host of features that we can, well, create. So let's use our power of reason here. Let's look at all these different options on the left and select one of the features in the list to create a box shaped object. Uh, which one would you select? Well, box, you've got it. So when we select box, an interesting thing happens to our canvas right in the middle of our screen. We see three colored lines. We have a blue line, we have a green line, and we have a red line. These corresponds, correspond to axes. So one axis, two axes. And if we look at the top here, at our view cube, the blue line and the blue line here, which axis is it? It's the Z axis, or if you're in Canada, we call it the Z axis. If uh, you look at the red line, well, what axis is that? That is the X axis. You've got it. And then the green line. What axis is that? Well, we need to rotate our view cube and look at what happens. Boom. We've got our Y axis there in green. So how many axes do we have total? Three axes. What are we learning here? 3D modeling, 3D programming. There's three dimensions, three axes. Yes, three axes make three dimensions. So now, what are the orange colored squares? Well, let's hover our mouse over each one. Let's hover it over this one. You can see the orange kind of turns to a little bit more of a pale or a lighter orange. So here, this grid appears and the grid intersects what axes? What do you see? Well, it intersects the blue axis and the red axis. So this square is actually called the 
xz plane. So if we hover over this one, it intersects the blue line and the green line. So remember the blue line is the z, the green is the y. So what plane is this called? This is called the yz plane. And this one right here, it intersects the green and the red axes. So what is the plane called? Well, you've got it. It is the xy plane. So which plane do we pick? We need to pick one of them. We need to pick either one of those, the xy, the xz, or the yz plane. Well, let's pick the xy plane. Why? Well, picture your desk right in front of you. If you don't have a desk, uh, remember that 9 out of 10 engineers recommend having a desk. So the desk in front of you is like a work surface. It has a width and a depth to it. Now picture the width being the x direction and the depth as being the y direction, while the surface of your desk is the xy plane. So just like a little child making something out of clay on a desk, we're going to be doing the exact same thing with our 3D model, our 1, 2, 3 block. So let's do it. Let's pick our xy plane. There we go. Now, if we just hover our mouse, just leave it alone, a little message comes up that says what? Place first corner. So for the first corner, let's pick our bullseye. Now, as we bring our mouse to the center of the bullseye, it locks or snaps into place. So let's le left click on our mouse, and then we'll move the cursor off to the side. So now you'll see that there are two numbers on our screen. And actually, the dialog box to the right of our mouse cursor says specify the size of rectangle. So we will need to select our dimensions. Now, how do we select it? Well, one defines our x dimension and the other defines our y dimension. It's important that at this point that you don't touch the enter or return button on your computer. Just don't do it. Press the tab button. As you see, when we press tab, it jumps from one dimension back to the next. So let's press tab until you get to the Y direction and type the number three. There we go. And now you can see beside that little window where we just typed three, there's a lock there because it's locked at a dimension, three. So now let's press tab and go to the X dimension and we are going to type two. And look what happens. We get a lock icon besides each of, each of those little windows. So that means that three inches in Y is locked, two inches in X is locked. This is great. So now at this point, we can press the enter or return button. Let's do it. Wow. So what happens next? Well, now we need to specify the height. So this is amazing in Fusion. It makes it easy for us if we make mistakes or if we need to change something, it's very easy to do so. So look at all these different ways that we can. We can move the arrow to create some height. As I move it up and down, look at the look at our box off to the side. As I move this down, look at our height changes in that dialog box as well. So this is very simple to create any of our dimensions. So we can create our height at one inches. Let's say we want to flip our length and our width. Say I want to have a three inch length and a two inch width. Well, we can do that as well. But let's just keep it uniform here. Let's keep a two inch length, a three inch width, and a one inch height. So now we click OK. Congratulations, everyone. You've just created your first part or component in Fusion 360. Amazing. Let's click on our little home here. Now, before we move on, let's just talk about a way of changing the blocks dimensions. We mentioned that before. Uh, as we're creating something, it's very easy. Fusion makes it very easy for us to change dimensions. So say we put the wrong dimension in, or if we just like to change it. Well, it's easy. How do we do it? Let's go all the way to the bottom of our screen. And there we have, do you remember what this is called? Our 
timeline, our timeline. So uh, let's look at the very first item in our timeline. And what do you see? It's a box. There we go. That's the box that we just created. So let's right click and edit feature. You can also double click on it, but some have a really hard time with double clicking on it before it actually does something. So right click and edit feature. And then we go right back to that dialog window. So say, for example, we accidentally put in a weird number here and we're like, no, 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 that's not the size of our box. Just go back to edit feature, change the length to two. One little secret for fusion is look at, I'm going to enter my dimension and then just press tab again. It goes to the next dimension. Let's go three, go to the next one. We can go one. Look at how easy I can change it. Three, two, one. There we go. Let's go five inches, uh, six inches, nine inches. And I'm just using tab here, everyone. So let's go back to it. Three, tab, two, tab, one. Oh, sorry. Two, three, one. There we go. Enter. It's so simple. So remember, if we need to change anything, just go down to our timeline, right click on whatever we've just done and edit feature. So what you've just learned is the easy way of creating such a simple shape, but easy doesn't always mean the best way. So now let's learn a second way of creating the exact same one, two, three block, but by using something called a sketch. And as we go to our create uh, drop down menu, you see uh, right after new component, we have create sketch. So first, let's delete the box that we've just created. Let's go down to our timeline. I'm going to single click it with my mouse and press delete on my keyboard and boom, it's gone just like that. So now let's create our sketch. So again, let's go to our create menu and create a sketch. So look at what happens here. We come up with the exact same planes. We have to pick the same plane. In this instance, we're going to pick the X, Y plane. Our ca canvas will automatically orient. And so right now it's like we're looking at our desk surface from a bird's eye view. So sketching is like creating a 2D feature instead of creating a 3D feature. Now, after we select our plane, look at the toolbar on the top of the screen. We now have a new tab called sketch that didn't exist there before. So we're going to create a rectangle. So hover over the rectangle, but don't click on it. Look at what the information window says. It says two point rectangle creates a rectangle using two points for the diagonal corners. Select the first point as the start of the rectangle, select the second point or specify the width and height values. So you'll also notice that besides where it says two point rectangle, there is a lowercase r in brackets. That means that the shortcut for a rectangle is the r on your keyboard. So as you keep working through Fusion 360 and keep learning it, you will no doubt memorize many, many shortcuts. So let's select the rectangle or press R on your keyboard. Now in our dialog window, we can pick a two point rectangle, but look what we can also pick. We can pick a three point rectangle and a little dialog window comes up when we hover our mouse there explaining what a three point rectangle does, or we can pick a center rectangle. So if possible, we want to sketch everything around our center point or bullseye, which will make many things easier for us in the future. So let's pick the center point rectangle or the center rectangle, and then click on the bullseye. Now look what happens when I move my rectangle out. It locks to the center of our bullseye, but as I move my cursor to the bottom right, the rectangle gets bigger or smaller. So here, now we need to input our dimensions just like we did with our box earlier. So let's do this. For our X dimension, let's type in two, 
press tab and then three. There we go. So now at this point, we can press enter to finish our sketch. Great. And then we can finish our sketch as well. So look at what we have on our sketch. We've created this rectangle. And as we hover our mouse over, it turns blue. When it turns blue, a new feature is enabled for us. We can turn it into something 3D. So let's go up to our top, to our toolbar, and hover over right after sketch, just like reading English. We go to the next item, the next feature, and look what we have, extrude lowercase e so the shortcut is lowercase e it adds depth or op to open or close sketch profiles or faces so let's do that let's i'm going to press e this time it automatically picks our sketch sometimes it does this sometimes it doesn't we don't have time to explain all instances right now but sometimes it will automatically select our sketch and sometimes it won't if it doesn't, look at right here. Again, we start from the top, we work down just like in English. So the profile, maybe it says select. Well, we can just select that profile and then it says one selected. If it select the wrong profile, just hit that X button and then select the correct one. Maybe there's many squares. So we want to select the correct one. And then just like creating the box in the past, we can move our arrow up to create depth or we can create distance right here. Let's do that one inch in our dialogue uh, window. Great. So once we're done that, let's just hit the OK button and look at this. Congratulations, everyone. We've created a one, two, three block using a sketch and an extrude. So interesting here, if we go back down to our timeline, look at what we have. We have a sketch and an extrude. So very simple. If we want to change our sketch, just right click it, edit sketch, and we can change our dimensions. How do we do that? Well, look at our dimensions here. I'm going to click it and move it. You will note that the two inches, it doesn't change. This is just placing where we want our dimension to lie. There we go. But if I want to change the dimension, I double click it. Let's make that four inches. Four, enter. Boom. And again, I can move the four inside. I can move it on the outside, but the dimension doesn't change unless I double click. I can change the three as well. Let's go to, I don't know, six inches. Great. If we input new dimensions, let's finish our sketch and look at what happens. Our part all of a sudden gets much bigger. The extrude automatically is applied and we get a much bigger part but let's go back to our one two three block so let's change this back to two inches tab oh we can't press tab at this point we have to hit enter and three inches for our depth so let's review we created a one two three block using two different methods the first method is by selecting box under our create menu. There it is. The second way is by first creating a sketch or the first item in our toolbar and then extruding it after. So congratulations, everyone. You have learned two different ways to create a very simple object, but believe me, these tutorials are going to get uh, more in depth and you're going to learn how to do more and more complicated shapes to make exactly what you can visualize in your imagination. So thank you very much. Hope to see you in the next lesson. Please, again, I'd like to encourage you, if you've benefited from this lesson at all, please like, comment, and subscribe. If you're thinking about purchasing a subscription to Fusion 360, please see the link below to save $50. Looking forward to seeing you in the next lesson, where we will start learning about making 3D parts from drawings and then creating our next part based off of that drawing. Until then, take care and keep learning with the Learn It channel.